hello guys welcome to my youtube channel i'm sophia and today i'm gonna make you some amazing chocolate espresso panna cottas and i'm gonna be using my brand new dario molds silicone dario molds which you can get in the link in the description below they're absolutely fantastic so let's get started and i'm gonna show you how to make this perfect panna cotta i've been making panna cotta quite a lot in my life and i really i actually really fancy the vanilla panna cotta i do have a really awesome recipe on my blog if you follow the link in the description below that is a vanilla and white chocolate panna cotta but today i'm gonna make Make a chocolate version a dark chocolate version and it's actually really nice and creamy and smooth and all you need is some gelatin now I use gelatin leaves or gelatin sheets and these are premium quality gelatin sheets if you don't have sheets you can literally just use the powder but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually blend it up so that I get the equivalent of powder and then we can use that much better to dissolve our panna cotta And then we're going to fill that back into a bowl because we're only going to need that a little bit later. It's just like, it's really fine, it's not powder but that's absolutely cool. We just need it to be a little bit finer than before. What we're going to do next is pop in our chocolate. I use a dark chocolate for this, minimum 70%. You could use a milk chocolate for it as well, it just makes the entire panna cotta a little bit sweeter. With white chocolate I balance the sugar a little bit because you don't want it too sweet. Because I'm going to add in some espresso, it's going to get really nice and bitter at the same time as coffee and chocolate tea. So 70% is absolutely perfect for this one. And we're just going to blitz it up as well. Let's fill that one also into a bowl. We're going to need that in a bit, but I want to make sure I can mill my sugar first. Essentially, if you have a little bit left over, it doesn't really matter right now at this stage. You don't need to clean anything. You just literally pour it all out, leave it as it is. And then we're going to pop our sugars in. There's a lot of milling involved in making panna cotta, uh, which is really interesting. But it's all going to come together really nicely in the end. Right, pop that on as well. And now we're just going to add in the remaining ingredients. But before I do that, I'm going to take my little bowl with gelatin. And I'm just going to pop that on top. And I'm going to weigh in 100 grams of my milk. All I want to do is essentially make sure this is dissolved properly in cold water. When you buy gelatin powder or gelatin leaves, make sure they're the ones that can be dissolved in cold liquid, not the ones in hot liquid, because we are currently dissolving in cold milk. So just as a little tip, because otherwise it may not set and we don't want that to happen, do we? So now we're adding in our chocolate. We're adding in our milk. All It just all goes in there, really easy, really nice. And we're gonna add in now I have espresso powder, you could also use, it's literally instant espresso powder or you could use some instant coffee granules, whichever ones you have at home, you can leave this out all together as well if you don't like it, add a tiny bit of chilli instead, you can flavour your panna cotta however you like, I find that this goes really well though and actually creates a really lovely flavour, just a teaspoon is probably enough, if you like it a bit more strong maybe one and a half teaspoons but I wouldn't add more than that. And then we're going to turn this on. 70 degrees to warm it up. We aren't cooking panna cotta, right? Although it's called cooked cream essentially. We're not cooking it properly. We're only going to heat it for a few minutes and then we're going to dissolve this in the meantime. The gelatin just needs to sit there for a while, just dissolve while we're cooking this up. And then I'm going to show you the next step. So it's been about four minutes now. The mixture is warm, it's not completely hot. And what we're doing now is we're adding in the gelatin. So it's dissolved essentially, it's looking a little bit more thick than before. And we're just going to pour that all in. If you have the powder, it will probably dissolve even better. But that's absolutely fine. We're going to heat it up now again for another 30 seconds just to incorporate it really nicely. And then we're on the last step already. Right, this is now almost done. The mixture looks really, really good. Essentially, I mean, you can't really tell much yet. It's just going to look like that. What we're going to add in now is our double cream or thickened cream if you don't have double cream. Minimum about 32% fat is what we really want. And we're just going to add this in to cool the mixture down a little bit because we don't want that gelatin to be heated up too much anymore. Just pour that right in. And it's really lovely. This is what's going to make this so tasty. Off we go. And then you're just going to mix this in 
for another few seconds on speed three, just so it's all per perfectly incorporated, and then we're ready to pour that into our individual Dariel molds. I'm gonna show you how to do that with silicone and give you a couple more tricks on how to get that really nicely done. With these awesome Dario molds, essentially, they're really cute, first of all. They are absolutely fantastic quality. They're made of a much, much, much thicker premium silicone, so you can reuse them for many, many years. I find them also really useful for a lot of other things. You can steam, you can bake, you can freeze, you can make ice creams, you can make steam puddings, whatever you like. But for panna cotta, there's a great trick on how to release panna cottas much easier. You essentially just take your Dario mold, and rinse each one under cold water just for a few seconds and don't be afraid to leave a few drops of that water back in those molds. This is going to help release them later on really nicely. I'm just going to do that with all of them and there you go. Then we're going to take our mixture and essentially just pour it in. Okay, So it's now a warm-ish mixture that just goes right into each Dario mold. So all that's left to do now is essentially pop them in the fridge. You can transport them really nice and easily because they're so sturdy, they won't go flimsy and then shake all over the place. So you just pop them as they are in the fridge for a minimum of four hours or overnight. So you can prepare them ahead an hour, a night in advance, no problem. And then later I'm going to show you how to actually release them in the best possible way to make your perfect panna cotta. It's been about four hours now and my panna cottas are done. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. They're basically, they were in the fridge and they look a bit like this. So they don't, totally don't come out by themselves. Now there's a couple of ways you can basically remove panna cottas from the silicone Dario molds. And this is for anything. If they're in any type of mold, you're gonna to have to remove them nicely. Uh, one way is to essentially just use your knife and just run it through the edge of the panna cotta just to basically loosen it, and that's all you need to do. And then you're just gonna leave that panna cotta for a few seconds just to sort of wobble down, and then you're just gonna wobble it until it comes out. The second way is to basically take a little bit of boiling water, I've just boiled it in the kettle essentially, and then to dip your Dario mold, the entire thing, just into it for about 30 seconds, just to sort of heat up the outside. That will cause this entire panna cotta to shrink, and then you can pop it back onto your plate very, very quickly. It is really important as a top tip that your panna cotta is completely set before you attempt to remove it from your Dario mold because otherwise it just doesn't come out easily. If it's ever so slightly unset, so maybe after three and a half hours or so, you'll have a really tough time getting it out without running a knife through. So just make sure you're actually waiting for the at least four hours until it's completely set and then it's really easy to turn it out. I'm actually just gonna serve mine with a bit of strawberries because it's a chocolate panna cotta and strawberries go super well with that. So just decorate it on your plate when you serve it to your friends or family, whoever you serve it to. And then I'm going to sprinkle over a few chocolate sprinkles. That's because it looks really nice. You could also serve it with a bit of chocolate sauce, vanilla sauce, or just a little bit of double cream. Totally up to you. And then you have your absolutely fantastic, super amazing looking panna cotta. And it's really wobbly. I do love doing them wobble. It's really nice, isn't it? So this is panna cotta. It's super, super amazing. I'm gonna serve this up to my friends now. So here's my panna cotta. It is a chocolate and coffee panna cotta, which I'm gonna try now. Mmm. Mmm. And you can really taste the lovely coffee, but it's not overpowering. It's really nice and subtle. So you don't have to actually feel like you're eating complete coffee dessert right now. And it goes super well with strawberries, so let me try another one. Mmm. Oh yeah. And you can see it's got the perfect texture. It's perfectly wobbly, still really perfectly set as well. So if you want to make something that is as tasty as this, go subscribe to my channel, ring that little bell button, follow the link in the description below, and you can make really, really awesome really tasty chocolate espresso panna cottas and don't forget to use that amazing Dario mold which you can get on my shop via the link in the description below see you guys next time